Welcome back, folks, to the Mel Wright Show. This is episode 226. We've got a returning guest from last year. He was one of our most popular guests, and he was requested back by our audience. We've got Zach Hamo back in the show, folks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Zach, uh, um, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? Sure. So yeah, so my name's, my name's Zach Hammer. I, uh, I am the founder, CEO. Actually, I call myself the chief bottle washer at uh, Real Estate Growth Hackers. Uh, it's a company I founded about, what, I don't know, six years ago or so, I guess now. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we help real estate agents with their marketing in all sorts of different ways. These days, uh, more so in terms of training and, and coaching. Uh, but we have a, a handful of services and whatnot as well. But yeah, we, we focus on helping agents to generate and convert leads. Oh, it sounds great. And we're going to be talking. Our main subject is what Zach um, calls the local celebrity show model. It sounds intriguing and interesting. So we're going to be talking about And I've got my great co-host with me, Robert Newman. Robert, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? Yes, I am... uh... An inbound marketing wizard for real estate. No, I'm just kidding. I, my name is Robert Newman, and I'm a, I'm a web tech guy that's been doing it for a long time. So check out my website if you if you want to meet me. Let's let's talk to, to to no. You introduce yourself, John. Then let's talk to Zach. I'm excited. And I'm the I'm the CEO and founder of Mail Right. That's consumed most of my money for the past three years. <laughs> But but, uh, um, <laughs> but it, it now does actually produce results for real estate agents. We use the power of Facebook and some other mythologies to get you quality leads. And then our system automatically keeps you in front of those leads. If that sounds interesting, go to the MailRite website. You can put, book a free demo with me and I'll show you the power of the MailRite system. So, Zach, uh, um, so the local Supreme, I can't, I, 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 I'm terrible, I cannot talk uh, hey, let, me, let me help you out, John. So today we're going to talk about the local celebrity form Show. of generating traffic and leads, uh, something that we actually talked to who our last client about, a little bit, Ray Petkevis, uh, if you haven't had a chance, Pet Kevis, if you haven't had a chance, Zach, check out the show, you will, you will get, be tickled, I promise you. <laughs> Um, it actually sure. looks like we've got you not in your your truck. I, I feel disappointed because I kind of feel like I'm I'm watching catch me if I can, if you can when I talk to you because you're like <laughs> where in the world are you where are you going today so what's so, yeah so it's uh it's it's part of it's part of the RV life occasionally uh, things happen you break down we are in that phase right now uh, so uh, we're actually we're currently in uh, in Council Bluffs Iowa uh, which you know. I think there's the people that live in Council Bluff, Iowa, and probably their family members are the ones in the world who know where that is. But uh, it's next to Omaha, uh, which is a little bit more familiar to people. But uh, but yeah, we uh, we broke down uh, actually a month or so back in Wyoming, and so we're in the process of getting it repaired and or deciding if we're going to get something new because it keeps breaking down. So we're probably going to get, uh, get a new RV either. at this point, but. But yeah, so 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 like you were mentioning though, for anybody who's watching that isn't familiar, I actually I live full time in an RV, traveling the country normally. So uh, so wow. I, I I'm I'm often in all sorts of different places. But, but wow, yeah. fantastic! <laughs> so on to this celebrity show model. Tell us more, Zach. You know, tell us more yeah. what what this what all this is about. So so this this concept, the local celebrity show, is is the result of a, of a good amount of time that I've, that I've been spending with, uh, with real estate agents. And, and one of the things that I noticed is that as a real estate agent, most of your day-to-day -day expertise, the things that you're dealing with day after day after day are, are real estate transactions and the inner workings of that. What's going on with the market? What's going on with you know, how to get a home for the best price or how to sell your home for the most money? And, and these are the topics and the information that that a real estate agent you know, lives and breathes and, and can rattle off readily. Unfortunately, for I'd say anywhere, actually, I mean, you can, you can pretty much do the math. At any given point, somewhere around 99% of the market, that content is completely irrelevant to them. They don't care, they don't wanna hear about it, right? It's, it's boring. And so if, if as a real estate agent, all you ever talk about 
is real estate, you're training most of the market at any given point to ignore you. Uh, and so what I wanted to do is come up with a concept that allowed real estate agents to stay in front of the market at large, their, you know, their, their sphere of influence, their past clients, their friends and family, as well as those in the market that they can build a relationship with who, who, oh, give me just a minute. Oops. Sorry, my, my son is behind me waking up. I need to get my, uh, get my wife in here to, uh, to grab him for me. And kidnap, kidnap him. <laughs> kid, kidnap him, that's right. Anyway, I'll continue. We might have a little bit of background noise for yes. a second, but I'll, I'll, get my, I'll get my wife in here to deal with him. But uh, anyway, so, so the local celebrity show is, is designed to fix that problem. It's designed to give you something that you could talk about as a real estate agent that, that allows yeah, you I, to... I, I just want to slightly ahead. interrupt there because I think you're so spot on, but that's right. the depressive bit. But the good news, which I'm sure you were going to say, is that right. people right. are fascinated by homes, aren't they? Right, right. That's, that, I think what, we've, what you stated is totally correct, which is the bad news. But the good news is that um, if, you, if you talk about things in the right way they are fa most people are fascinated by other people's homes aren't they right right yeah absolutely and so there, there are there are segments give me just a second uh, my video is going to cut out for a second but uh there are uh there are lots of things that you can do that that work well to talk to the market at large and you're right uh you know talking about homes that 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 are that are good looking that are interesting in and of themselves that that are um, you know, interesting by themselves. That's a worthwhile topic. Talking about uh, lifestyle tips and things that, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that just go into living in general. Uh, so things like, uh, you know, DIY tips and, and, and current design trends in homes and things like she sheds and man caves and those kinds of things. Those, those kinds of things can appeal to the market at large and still be in this real estate realm. Yeah. But to me, one of the things that is, the, the most advantageous, and uh, there's a number of reasons for this, but is, is to just talk about what's great about your community, the businesses you love, the, the hikes that you like to do, what events are coming up this weekend, the kinds of things that show that you're connected into your local area that not only allow you to be branded as, as a real estate expert, but they allow you to be branded as a local area expert with content that people want to hear regardless of if they're looking to do real estate or not. So it's, it's a, it's a great way to be able to stay top of mind and aware to the entire market instead of just that segment that cares about real estate right now. Oh, I think you're so spot on there. And this is why I'm so still so upbeat for the local passionate agent and right. why I think in 10 right. years time that there still will be agents that might have to, it, the market will change to some extent, but I, I'm still believe in the local passionate agent. What do you reckon, Robert? Well, not only do I agree with both of you, I've, I've been dropping videos this literally in the last couple of weeks, Zach, that, uh, that talk about this general concept because right. you're talking about a real estate show. And so I'm going to take a slightly different spin and just add my little, my little dollop into it, which is if you do any of that real estate show using video, like talking to a local business owner is a favorite piece of advice of mine, then you can take that video and apply it to social networks that people aren't all that familiar with, such as Nextdoor, which is specific to neighborhoods and specific right. to real estate. And so now you can become the mayor of your town leveraging these social platforms that are, are kind of becoming designed for it. And I could, so I love the, I, I love the idea, but you're the one with the boots on the ground. You're the one I think who's doing the consulting clients. Can I ask if you've, if you've gotten some of your clients to successfully adopt this strategy? And if so, what has been the result? Yeah. So we've, we've got a couple of test cases out there. We don't have a ton right now. We're still in the process of, of launching this idea with clients of, of really getting the ground, the, you know, the groundwork, the, the traction behind it. So we've, we've started the process of launching a couple of shows like this, uh, but we don't have enough, enough traction yet to really see results. So yeah. this is, this is the kind of strategy that, uh, you know, that, that honestly, 
it, it's, it's kind of like direct mail, right? You're going you're gonna to get out and you're going to do this and it's going to take you anywhere from two to three months at the minimum, probably more before you really start seeing the impact, I think, in your business. Because it's a, it's a long-term, slow drip sort of, sort of strategy, right? You're not, you're not talking to the people who are you know, the, the, the hottest, uh, you know, most ready to do a transaction kind of, kind of folks. You're talking to everybody. So it takes a bit of time to incubate uh, and as a result, it, it, you know, it, it takes a while for it to, uh, to ultimately cultivate into, into deals and, and turn into that. Um, but yeah, but I mean, part of what we are seeing is that we, you know, we're seeing, yes, it's very easy uh, to take that content and, and adapt it far and wide. Part of why I like the idea of starting with a show, uh, and, and honestly, part of the reason why I call it a local celebrity show, you mentioned the concept of being the digital mayor, and that's a concept that I've heard as well. But I'm not, I'm not sure if mayor actually in, in, encapsulates the right idea. When I, think, when I think of a mayor of a town, I often don't know who the mayor is, right? Like even in the places that, I, that I've lived, I don't know who the mayor is. I don't pay attention to the local politics as much. But if there's somebody who I see day in and day out involved with the businesses that I love, that's connecting me to the, the places that I love, I do know celebrities, local celebrities, people who are known in the community. And that's, that's part of why, why I like that, 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 that term and that concept for this, because it, it, it allows you to be somebody who is known and seen in the community, you know, in general. And, and so you could take this concept of, of communicating with your local businesses, talking about what's great about your community. And then, yeah, you spread it far and wide. You start with video, but you take that video, you turn it into an audio podcast. You take that video, you chop it up into smaller, meaningful segments that you can put out on Instagram and disperse far and wide on Facebook and on Nextdoor and, and all over the place where this type of content makes sense. So it's, 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 a, it's a simple strategy where you can have these consistent conversations that also flow and form a much wider marketing network, uh, uh, you know, form the assets for, for a much wider stream of, uh, of content that you could be putting out, which is part of what makes it so powerful and leveraged. Okay. Um, I don't disagree with you. Like in terms of being a mayor, like, and versus a celebrity, I totally agree with you. So, but, but it is a more traditional and more like common concept to say that you're the digital mayor of a town. It, it's been right. popular since Foursquare made it popular when their app was a little bit more explosive than it is right now. But right. Um, so, so I love when you, when you're taught, so you've got these general ideas, like go out and do like talk to businesses and be, get in front of people. How do you have like a boots on the ground mechanics way? Like, is it, is it like, how would you say approach a business owner as an example? Like, like, or would you even provide that advice? Would you, would you stay at top level or would you go deeper into it? Yeah. So, I mean, what, what we're doing right now is we're actually, you know, setting up and running uh, the, the full suite of service where we're essentially what we're doing is we're trying to take care of it so that all the real estate agent has to do is show up for a show, record the content, right? We're, we're booking the guests, we're reaching out to the folks, we're, we're laying the groundwork so that all they have to do is, is record the content. So yeah, I can give some, I can give some very practical information about what, what we're doing to approach guests uh, and, and get people booked onto shows. Uh, okay. And it, it's honestly, it's incredibly simple. Uh, okay. Because first and foremost, these local businesses, they want to be featured, right? People who, who <laughs> you know, are, are there locally, they, they want this free publicity, right? If you come to somebody and you say, hey, we've got you know, the ability to get you in front of our audience of people in the community. I'd love to just build up your business and talk about what's great about you, get you featured in front of my audience. Would you be interested in coming on my show? And uh, it, it, it's one of the easiest yeses you can get. And, uh, and yeah, I, say, I think to me, one of the key tricks, and like for anybody who's listening, in terms of, of getting this you know, implemented, the key trick is to, is to learn who you should be reaching out to uh, and why. Uh, and I, I've, I've got, some, got some recommendations on that front as well, if you want to hear them. Well, I think we do, but we'll, we'll leave that to our second half, folks. And uh, we're going to go for our break, folks, but we'll be back. And um, I already think this is a fantastic episode with great knowledge. So we'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. I like the feel of this show. It's uh, We've had a good run of shows since the new year, haven't we, Robert? I think we, we, we're on a high here, and the standard is getting higher and higher with Zach. Um, 
I've, just before you're going to go into your point, Zach, I, I think the other thing is that there's been no better time for doing something like this because you don't you don't even have to bother even with podcasting i love podcasting you know um i just love it but you got you got to set up rs feeds with itunes you've got to have somewhere to store your episodes you've you've got to have a platform like zoom to record it there's a lot of small steps which robert doesn't have to deal with that I do see so lucky Robert see <laughs> Zach, uh, um, but but if you if you're just going to do this with your iPhone and just do it on Facebook Live, but do it at the same time every week, you can just literally cut out all the all these small steps that I don't mind, but it's literally a page of little steps that you've got to follow. To get it right. onto iTunes, basically, you can uh, just avoid all that, can't you? <laughs> yeah. So my 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 motto, and anybody who's uh, who's followed me for a while, uh, you know, I've got a I've got a group called my inner circle that hear this from me all the time. Uh, but my motto is is done is better than perfect. I think at some point I'm going to get that tattooed on my body somewhere. And and you're exactly right. I mean, the reality is if somebody wants to implement this concept and just get started, yeah, it's as simple as pulling out your your phone going to the business and recording something with them, right? Like you could do it as impromptu as that, or just recording something yourself saying, you know, Hey, these are the top five places that I recommend for a taco in my town. And here's why, um, it, it, like that kind of content will do well and will still promote you this way. And it doesn't have to be overthought in order to be effective. Uh, what, what I look at offering with the service that we're, that we're running is, is, is to help people take that to the next level where, they're, they're accounting for not just the people that are on Facebook, but also the people that would still consume the show if they're driving in their car, right? That's, that's where the, the podcast feed potentially comes in so that you could still get that exposure, even if yeah. you don't have somebody captive and, and listening to you, or if they're not going to take the time to go to your website, or if they're not going to take the time to check you out on Instagram, where you have all of these different ways that you could still reach those people, be having those conversations and be in their, in their, you know, in their mind and, and in existence. Um, but you're exactly right. I I would much rather somebody start something that isn't perfect than try and do everything and then fail. Well, uh, basically, so. you know, they've got a powerful, let's say they've got iPhone 10 in their pocket with a, right. a gorilla stand and two wire mics. You, you, right. You're you off, aren't you? you um, yeah. That's that's basically on on Facebook that's it, right. basically, or you could choose you. But I actually would advise people to start on Facebook, wouldn't right. you? And then promote the video with a little bit of money as well, maybe. I don't know. What do you think yep. about that? Yeah, and, and that's that's exactly what, what we do and recommend as well. So uh, going, going live is great. Now, I, I have found that some people, um, eh, some people have a mental hurdle. Uh, of of going live, right? It's something that they that they struggle with the uh, the concept of actually doing mentally. And I would I would rather somebody record the video. Period. If they need to not do it live, then don't do it live. If you can do it live, there's definitely a benefit to that, right? Like you get that live interaction. There's a different feel that you get uh, when when you have that live you know that that live feed going on. Uh, but you know, record it however you need to that that gets you to actually do it. Uh, but yeah, if you if you get it onto Facebook. Facebook is currently one of the best places to cheaply get your video in front of people natively in a way that they'll consume it so that you can, you can grow your audience for stupid cheap. I mean, it's, it's one of the things that I've, that I've talked to folks about the, the average cost per piece for direct mail. Let's say it's about a buck. Now it can, it can be cheaper than that. You could definitely get direct mail for cheaper than that, but postage and everything included about a dollar per address that you're going to hit. Okay. So that means if you want to hit a thousand people, buy a direct mail, you're going to spend about a thousand dollars. Okay. Give or take a few hundred, maybe depending on where you're getting your printing. But if you want to reach the same thousand people on Facebook, it's going to cost you about 10 bucks. The average cost per 1000 on Facebook is about $10. Uh, and, and you can do that time after time. You can, you can reach that same 10 people. If you spend a thousand dollars reaching that same 10 people, you're going to hit them like every day that they're on Facebook over the course of a month, multiple times. And so you get drastically more exposure, drastically more influence and with content that they actually want to see. So yeah, it's amplifying a bit with some, with some paid promotion 
is a fantastic way to uh, to make sure that a show like this takes off and gets in front of the people that you want to see it. And um, I, oh, Scott, go on, Robert. Sorry. No, my bad. Because we got we lost we lost the break thread. He was gonna, but go ahead. You finish what you're. Gonna oh say. yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Um, and I think the other factor is that you like you, you touched it. You can repurpose this content, but you can also trans get the um, get the show transcribed get it on your own website and then you you the seo local benefit of doing that is enormous isn't it zach absolutely absolutely especially because and and i know robert i know you're you're much more on the on the front of the inbound the seo and so I'm sure you'd agree with this aspect, but those, those local keywords, those local, local topics are drastically easier to rank for than more of those generalized terms. And, and it, makes it, you know, it, it makes it such an easy but right form of, of media, especially when you get those videos together combined with written articles, you get that all on a page, you get, you get people interacting with it well for keywords that are easy to go after. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a strategy that, that just, it goes so far and wide and, and it could literally, it could be the foundation for almost all of your marketing aside from you know the real estate specific stuff to the people who have raised their hand and said that they are interested in the real estate information, right? The people who are looking to buy, who are looking to sell right now. But, uh, but I mean, it still works for them too. It still, it still keeps you top of mind for those people. Well, I think it's combining, combining the two keywords that I think agents yeah. have got to remember in 2020. That's video and going super niche. Right. And if you can go super niche and, and also have video, I, I think you're going to win in 2020, aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Over to you, Robert. Uh, just back to circling back around to, we were, we were talking about you were mentioning like uh, how easy it was to book shows uh, right. with people locally. And, uh, and there was, we, we talked briefly, like we were going in another direction. I said, Hey, are there some other tips that you could, that you could give people? And you said, absolutely. Yep. And then we went to break. So what were, I think, what were some of those other tips? I think that was where we were at. Yeah. So I, I always like to have like a systematic strategy to, to consistently know like, who am I going to go after and why? Right. So if I'm going to book a guest on a locally focused show, I want to start with the most likely guests that are going to already have a connection with, with the local community, right? The people that, that, that are already loved. Uh, I want to find the guests that maybe already have a good audience in and of themselves so that you get that halo effect. So that when you're promoting that business and they then promote your show, that, that they have an audience to help, help you grow as well, right? So that, that you get, you get that, that bleed over effect. Uh, and so the ways that I like to do this, so first and foremost, I think the, your passion for the content is going to matter more than anything else. So the first guest that I would always recommend going after are the businesses that you love, right? That, that, that you already love for whatever reason, you love their tacos. You love the, the, the yoga uh, program that they produce. You love the events that they put on, whatever it is, you love it. Pr talk about them, go to those people, talk about how much you love them. But if you, you know, at some point you run out of businesses that, uh, that, 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 are, that are your favorites, or maybe you can't get them all booked, right? And so how you could systematically go after other businesses is I like to go to sites like TripAdvisor and Yelp and sometimes Groupon. I'll explain Groupon in a second. But TripAdvisor and Yelp both, both have sections where you can look at the businesses that are the most popular or the, the things to do or the restaurants in an area that are the most popular, the highest reviewed, the most recommended. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you this is a good business that their customers, that their customers love, right? If, they've, if right. they're well ranked, if they're well reviewed, people are consistently giving them positive engagement, right? So you can be fairly sure if you talk about them that your audience is gonna get a good experience as well, right? And that's an, that's an important element. But you also know, if they're getting reviewed well, like, like you, guys, you guys could describe this, right? Out of any, every customer that you have, how often do you get a review back, right? It's, it's always a, a fraction. It's always a percentage of your total number of customers. You never get everybody to leave you a good review, right? Right. And so these businesses that, that, that are well-reviewed within their town, that means that comparatively, they either have more customers or their experience is that much better that people are you know, driven to, uh, to, to review them. 
So TripAdvisor is a site that I recommend going to. Yelp uh, has a couple of different ways that you can look at this. If you're looking for a specific type of business, like a restaurant, you can just do the search for the restaurant and then look at the businesses based on the reviews, right? So if you want a type of restaurant or if you just want restaurants in general. But one of the other things that's really uh, uh, useful about Yelp is that they have a section called New and Noteworthy. So new and noteworthy is a combination of things. It's businesses that have recently opened, but that they've recently opened and they're getting a good amount of reviews. So you're, you're getting new businesses that your audience may not already be familiar with, that you're able to be the one to introduce them to something cool that they haven't seen before, which, which really builds up a, a, a high degree of connection with you and your audience. Uh, but keep in mind, one of the other things that I like to talk about with this concept is uh, you're not, the, the point here isn't necessarily to always introduce your audience to something they don't know as much as uh, that, that can be good and that can be useful whenever you can. But sometimes it's about saying, I'm part of the tribe, right? You really love Joe's tacos. I love Joe's tacos too, right? And, and you're connecting with the people who already are, are already part of that tribe and basically getting to say, I'm one of you right? You're one of me. We are, we are among the same people. And it's another way to build that connection. So even if it's a popular business that everybody already knows about, or if it's a new business that not everybody knows about, both can have their, their benefits. And it's, and it's good to get a blend of both. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I, also, I, also, I also feel um, you can't overestimate the benefit of doing this if you join the Chamber of Commerce, oh, when right. you join some local... The way you're going to be seen um, is going to be completely different to the average bog standard agent that goes to some physical networking event. When you're doing this, you're implementing it, you will be seen as a real resource, won't you? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it, really, it is. It's like a wellspring of just all sorts of opportunity. You're exactly right. If you are, the, if you are a, a real estate agent in your community who's constantly lifting up other businesses, when those businesses who are day after day interacting with the community hear about somebody who's thinking about doing a real estate transaction, who are they going to think of, right? You start to rise in their mind as well. You start to become the place where they send referrals, where they want to refer business. And, and that's just the side benefit of this, right? Like it doesn't even have to be the reason you're doing it. it, it just, it's a natural byproduct of being somebody who's a connector in your community. That, that you start to see that, that, that influence and that, you know, that connection come as a result of this too. I think we're going to wrap up the podcast part of the show. Hopefully Zach can stay on for some bonus content, which you'll be able to see on the MailRite website with all the links and to all the resources that Zach gives for free to people. Um, and in the bonus content, I'm going to be asking Zach uh, about his views on Facebook. Though 2019 in publicity wasn't the greatest year for Facebook, but financially it was a super fantastic year for Facebook. I'm going to ask him about that. And I'm also going to ask him about living and traveling in his RV. I'm fascinated by that. So I'm going to be asking him there. So, Zach, uh, how can people find out more about you and your views and what you're up to? Yeah, so probably one of the best places, if, if what we talked about today is interesting to you, I have a, a, a simple page that I set up at localcelebrityshow.com. That's localcelebrityshow.com. Uh, you can go there. There's a video that explains everything that, that we're up to. You can steal this entire concept. We basically walk through what we're doing so you can steal it and run with it yourself. Or if you want to make it easy, you can hire us to do it for you. Uh, there's a video there that you can find out all about that. Otherwise, you can reach out to us at uh, realestategrowthhackers.com. Check out our website there and uh, uh, see everything that we're up to in general over and above just the uh, local celebrity show concept. Oh, that's fantastic, Zach. And Robert, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to? I actually have updates. Oh my God, 2019 was a real slow year. I only did two blog posts, but guys, to give you, give you a comparison and contrast, I've already done two blog posts in 2020. They're amazing. I'm getting lots of comments. Uh, one is how to name your real estate business, and the other is my annual review of the best places making real estate websites. You can find both of those updated for literally this month, this year, on my website, which is inboundrem.com. Go check it out. Oh, that sounds fantastic. We'll be back next week. We'll have an internal discussion between me and Robert or another great guest. 
and hopefully we provide some great value for you so you have a more successful 2020 not only for yourself but for your family we'll see you next week folks bye 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 -bye. (laughs) right so we're back so um i'd like to discuss with you to start off with um you know you're known as um, being very knowledgeable about Facebook and using the power of Facebook free and paid. It wasn't in PR terms, it wasn't the greatest year for Facebook. Um, financially, it's just a money machine, isn't it? You know, it's still <laughs> made. And uh, I think as many eyeballs are on their properties as the years before. So how do you see the year 2020 uh, do you still see Facebook as a very effective medium for real estate agents to get quality leads? Yeah, abs- absolutely. I mean, as as long as Facebook maintains its uh, its its reach and exposure, and still right now they they have it. And part of what Facebook's doing that's so smart. I mean, the the fact that they acquired uh, that they acquired Instagram, that they acquired uh, what, what what's the one that they own? WhatsApp. I think they yeah, own WhatsApp. That's right. right. Um, the fact that they're that they're paying attention to like where the market is already going and acquiring those platforms in order to kind of stay ahead of the curve, even if people might be leaving Facebook, who knows? Uh, it really makes me feel confident, like as an advertiser, that that their that their platform is going to be a solid place to to be advertising. Now we might need to change and adapt over time what those ads look like, what those mediums look like, because advertising in, in WhatsApp is obviously going to be a massively different thing than it is to advertise natively on Facebook. Um, and you know, and Facebook also is has been putting a lot of attention into their messenger platform, which is you know basically the same thing as WhatsApp. But uh, uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, as a platform to get reach and get reach cheaply, it's it's incredibly effective. Um, it, Facebook still continues to have one of the uh, uh, one of the lurking problems that people don't seem to understand uh, kind of intuitively, which is. Almost all Facebook traffic and Facebook marketing is is interest demographic, you know, psychographic based. Um, and and as a result, in terms of where you're reaching people in the funnel, it's almost always at like the very top end, if yeah. if if not even in the funnel yet. And and it's that's very different than if you're used to advertising. Shoot, even on on YouTube or Google, um, where you have query based targeting, where you can say this person is actively looking for homes, well, actively I looking use, to sell their home. I actually use the term Facebook is a destructive medium, whereas right. um, YouTube and Google is a query-based medium. Exactly. Exactly. And and that makes a big difference. I think both are good. I wouldn't say one over the other. I would I would just say know, you know, know the beast that you're playing with uh, and and know what to expect from it. You're going to you're going to pay to reach a lot more people in Facebook that are not going to convert for you. Um, and would, in, you in, um, would you also agree that with this before I throw it over to Robert, is that uh, I think I might be wrong here, I'm going to have to recheck, but I think over 60% of the American population, it could be higher, live in nine metropolitan areas. So the cost of advertising on Facebook in those nine metropolitan areas is going to be drastically different to a whole swath or a whole bigger area of America where the actual cost and competition of advertising on Facebook is a lot less. Yeah, I would, I would say that's, uh, I mean, it just in general, that's going to be true. The same way that, you know, running a billboard in LA is going to be drastically more expensive than running a billboard in Moberly, Missouri which is a place I lived there for a while. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, when you, when you have the difference of a population of 20 million people and all of the businesses and whatnot that go, that go together with that compared to, you know, uh, 14,000 people that live in a smaller town, it, just in general, the competition in the area is going to mean that the pricing of advertising is, is, you know, going to reflect that. Over to you, Robert. Um. I, I mean, I'm not the biggest, I understand the differences in the, in the marketplaces and, and as an inbound marketer, it's a constant conversation about quality versus quantity because in the world that I live in, if you develop a larger quantity of people that you have to talk to, there are systems that have to be in place in order to distill those conversations down to the ones that you really want to have. 
So as an inbound right. marketer, we do focus on query based marketing. And not only that, we don't even want to talk to everybody that, that is making a query. We want, to, we want to talk to the ones that engage with like a video like this and listen to all of the things that we have to say and then go, oh my God, you make ever so much sense. And then they reach out. So there's like three layers of qualification before you, you get down to it. But I would imagine if I had to guess and I was a Facebook marketer that potentially you could achieve some of the same things with a really well populated Facebook page that had all the right content on it. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, a lot of what you do, if you're going to do it from a, from a paid ad strategy, whether it's, you know, whether, whether it's Facebook or Google, if, if specifically just the paid side uh, is that you, you set up those same structures with like retargeting. So that you, that you have your, your top end offers and messaging, and then you retarget the engagers of those videos or that content with, you know, deeper, more qualified conversations. And then you retarget those people with your actual like calls to action that would end up in, in you talking to a person. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's completely possible and completely doable. Um, in fact, it's uh, probably one of the best ways to actually make a platform like Facebook really work for you. If, uh, if you, if you want to be having more qualified conversations rather than just having more conversations. And I think that's one of the key factors that people don't understand is retargeting and also having a CRM system, having some system that um, tries to keep in contact with those leads that have been generated by your Facebook campaigns. And it's, uh, they're like two areas where a lot of people, when they're trying to do it themselves, really fail, don't they? Yeah. Tool like MailRite <coughs> might help you with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I thought I, I, I thought I was I'm gonna get better pushing my own product in 2020. I helped you. I uh, helped you. Yeah, One of my rare moments of shameless promotion. I won't do it for myself, but I'll do it for you. Yeah, I will. Um let's get on to a more interesting subject. But uh, you say so you have become a digital nomad. You know, you roam yeah. in your yeah. RV. So how long have you been doing that? And what led to the decision that you were going to become a digital nomad? Yeah, so I've been, I've been on the road now uh, for about two years. Uh, so what month is it? We're in January. So yeah, in February, it'll be two years. Um, and uh, what, what led to it? Well, I've wanted to be on the road in an RV probably since about I got married. I think that's, that's when I first remember the idea coming into my was it the head. in-laws was, about... was was it the in-laws or... no no i just i just loved the idea of it but no it was about so that was about 12 years ago <laughs> uh and what what ended up making it happen for us uh was that i moved my you know my family my wife to uh, uh las vegas nevada and my wife is not a fan of the desert so six years in Vegas was enough to convince her that she was cool with uh, with going on. Anyway, I'll on go the road. anywhere with you, but oh, no, no, I don't want to start just, here. Just get me out of here. But, get me uh, out of yeah, I mean, it, it in terms of uh, in terms of uh, you know why we set out, why why it's something in our vision. Uh, part of uh, you know part of what I believe is that uh, in terms of creating good relationships and 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 investing in relationships that matter to you, one of the biggest things that that causes that is to create shared stories. Uh, and it tends to be that you create, you create more stories and you create better stories when you're out in the world doing things, right? Most, of, most people's memories uh, that, that they would share a story about, that they'd relive, that they'd remember, tend to happen when you were out doing something, when you were, when you were up and doing something. You don't tend to have many memories where you're sitting on the couch watching you know, the latest Netflix thing that you're binging. Uh, and what I found is that by living in, in a, in a normal house, you start to become uh, complacent, or at least I did. This is what I found for me. I started to be, I started to become complacent or complacent. And while there's lots of opportunities to get out and do things, it always feels like it's easier. You know, like there's always a tomorrow. There's always like, Oh, I could go there like next weekend. I can, I could do it later. And so you just don't, you, you spend more time not doing things than maybe you'd like to. Uh, whereas when we moved into the RV, one of the things that I found, we're, we're often only in a place for anywhere from a couple of days to maybe a week or two. And it, it, it removes this, th this idea that if you, that you have tomorrow, that you have tomorrow to go and do it. Because one of the things that we found is maybe you want to go and see a, a, a cool place, but, uh, if you wait till tomorrow, it's pouring down rain or it's, or it's, you know, you've got ice coming down or something like that, that basically prevents you from going and doing the thing that you want to. So you take opportunities as they come, you go now 
because you may not be there in a week or it may not be a- available the day that you're trying tomorrow. Um, so it, it, it's forced us to get out more and, and go and create more stories and do cool things. This, this past summer, we, we went from San Diego up to, uh, up to Canada, actually. We, didn't, we went into Canada briefly. So we did the whole West Coast uh, over the summer, I got to see bald eagles with my kids. We went to Yosemite and jumped off of uh, jumped off of waterfalls and you know thirty foot rock formations. We you know we 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 went to the beach multiple times. We saw gray whales. We almost saw some orcas. We didn't actually get to see the orcas, but uh, um, we went to what like two or three different national parks uh, just over the course of the summer. I, and and I've created memories both for myself and for my family that they'll remember for their life. And uh, the biggest, the biggest thing that made that happen is just being out and being forced to be in these areas where it's like, we either seize the moment now or we lose it. So anyway, that's, that's kind of the, uh, the impetus. That's the, that's the reason why, why we set out on the road. And um, being that you've been doing it for a couple of years, are there any kind of tips or insights that you would like to be able to tell yourself at the beginning of your digital nomad experience that you wish you knew at the beginning yeah i don't i don't know how to describe it i there there are some things that i guess i would say that not necessarily to myself i feel like i had a pretty decent understanding of of some of what was coming but i feel like there's a, a a number of people who like the idea uh and there might have some hang-ups so um so first and foremost i would say it's not for the faint of heart it is, it is something that there, there are very high highs and very low lows. I have, I have felt the worst in my life on the road and I felt the best in my life on the road. Uh, it, and no joke. I mean, like it, 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 it becomes very harrowing at time. I, I, I've changed, you know, I, I lost my power steering going into, uh, into Northern California near the, near the Redwoods National Forest. Uh, where I'm, where I'm driving, you know, around cliffs that overlook the Pacific Ocean, uh, that are, you know, towering high. I don't know if you're familiar with the area, but it's well, I, I, visited, uh, I actually visited um, um, what's the name Pacifica or that that town right on the that on the coast in Northern California, and I think there you um, go. And it is pretty, um, after Reading and all the burnout, um, and you go along right. that coastal road, it's pretty hairy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And especially when you're really in a... Really good uh, old steering. Know, yeah, 16,000 pound vehicle with no power steering. So, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've learned how to change my own power steering. I've changed alternators on the side of the road. Uh, I, I, I've, I've been in situations that were were scary or tiring but at the same time i've created more memories in the past year than probably many people will create in their life in their lifetime and and so it's it's definitely it's not something that you go into thinking that it's not going to be easy right like you do have to work at it but it's worth it it's so worth it i wouldn't trade it for the world uh so there's there's that uh, one of the other things to consider if you're specifically going to be a digital nomad uh one of your biggest costs is internet. <laughs> you, you invest in a lot of technology in order to make sure you have signal. You invest in way more cell phone plans than the average person should ever have to have. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and you go through a whole lot of... Uh, oh, you of, mean that of, unlimited plan isn't unlimited? <laughs> well, a lot... Shoot, if you want to talk about plans, I, I, can, I can talk to you about plans, but a, a lot of them are unlimited. Alone. What's that? You do a blog post on that a lot. You could have just this whole thing about... <laughs> Like like wireless carriers right. and traveling the country. In yeah. fact, there there is there is a couple that is a full time RVers as well that literally have created a business around that exactly internet on the road and that's all that they talk about. I, I forget what they're they're called now. It's like our uh, RV wireless resource or something like that. But anyway, um, but but yeah, like the unlimited plans can be great, but you're right. Not all of them are fully unlimited. The pricing on them varies. Uh, not to mention the network coverage makes a big difference. Verizon's got a fantastic coverage, but unless you're on one of their grandfather plans, it's hard to get true unlimited. Uh, so yeah, anyway, like AT&T has pretty good coverage, but can you get an unlimited plan or not? And can you use it as a hotspot? There's all sorts of things to consider. And then all of that, you know, like, do you actually have signal in the place where you're going to be? And like we have... Uh, 
$500 cell signal booster that we used to actually yeah. be able to get signal in more places. Oh, you got the, the um, thing that you can push up the... Um, yeah, oh. yep. All yeah, right, it's so been it, fascinating. It, it, I think, I'm sorry, listeners and viewers, uh, you thought we were going to be talking about real estate, but it's turned into uh, uh, RV, um, podcast <laughs> RV. But uh, I think it's a fascinating subject. Um, Zach, you're going to have to come back at some stage in the year. I think it's been a, fast, a fantastic discussion. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And we will be back Absolutely. next week with either an internal discussion no, or another great thought. I want to add a closing thought. So oh, good, good. I would Robert. love to do, if it's okay with both of you, of course, is I'd love to maybe circle back around six months, Zach, and follow up with you when your case studies have matured on this very subject that we talked about. John, how do you? Would you oh, that would be fantastic. That Zach, would be would you fantastic. Be Absolutely, yeah. I'm totally down to do that. Okay, awesome. <laughs> we we'll right. see. We we'll see you next week, folks. Bye. Thank mm-hmm. you.